morning everyone. Today we're gonna make seitan from scratch but we're gonna end up making a shredded chicken. I know a lot of people are telling me that they can't find vital wheat gluten uh, where they are because they live in a rural place. So I am gonna show you how to make shredded chicken just by kneading some flour and water together. Uh, now I kneaded this this morning. I used a stand mixer so it's a lot easier to uh, to use. And I use five cups of flour to two cups of water. And you get a nice, nice dough. Now this has been sitting for a while, so it's doing its thing. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna add water to all of this. And I'm gonna just let it sit in water and it's gonna just start pulling out some of the starches. I know it seems like a lot of work, but it really isn't because if you have a stand mixer, it takes two minutes to knead your dough and then it's a matter of just letting it sit there. You can do whatever you have to do around the house. Uh, you don't even have to bother with it. And then it's a matter of just adding some water to it and then let that sit again. So again, you could go about your day and still have this do what it has to do. So I would say if you're going to start doing this from scratch, uh, I would say either you do it the day before for the day after meal or if you're going to do it early in the morning, Make your dough, let it rest for about an hour, and then uh, add some water to it, let it rest for another half hour, and then start washing it. And then you're going to be left with just the gluten. So right now, I'm just going to add water to it, and I'm just going to let it rest a little longer until I'm ready to wash it. And you want to wash it till you're left. You're going to see you're going to hardly have anything left. The amount of dough that you see here is going to be... Uh, half of it if not even less than what that is there we go that's the size dough I have which is a pretty nice size dough and I just added some cold water. Do not add any hot water. It has to be cold. And I'm just going to let it sit. And what that's going to do is it's going to start breaking up some of the starches on my flour. And then I'll just start washing it. And then I'll come back and show you what I have left. So I'll see you in a bit, guys. Now I'm going to show you. This is what I have left of the dough that I, that I washed. And... This is just gluten. Out of that big ball, I had a big ball like this of dough. Uh, I'm left with this tiny little ball that I could actually put in my hand. Now, because I have so little, I'm not even going to use all the beans. All the beans that uh, I normally put in. And because this is still a little wet, we're going to need some other filler. And we're going to put that in so we can... Um, mix this and get it to a nice texture so I am just gonna break it up and put it in my um, food processor and we're gonna add other ingredients to this okay okay these are the beans that I cook and uh, I I cook these for a long time so they're nice and soft so this way it's easier for me to pass it through so I'm gonna use I'd say about maybe only half a jar. Don't forget, this is very wet. So I'm going to use half a jar of this. Okay. So we're going to use about maybe half a cup. Oh, I should say one cup. Sorry, not half a cup. That's about a cup. And we're going to put this in our Nutribullet. There we go. Just clean up my space here. I'm a little disorganized. I was outside trying to clean my backyard, which is like a challenge for me today. Okay, so here we go. Okay, we're going to put one teaspoon of agar to this. We're going to put two mushroom powders. 
that's going to help also pick up some of the moisture. And we're going to make this a Cajun flavor. There we go. And we're going to blend this up with organic pea powder. Because this is so wet, we need to pick up some of that moisture because I'm going to show you what the texture should be. So we're going to start off with a quarter cup of my organic pea flour and we're going to blend this up. Okay, here we go. So we're going to add this to our, yeah, next time do the, before you put the pea, pl uh, the pea powder, just mix your beans up first to make sure that it gets mixed up really good. I had a little moment here. I should have put this. I should have put this after. Okay. We're just going to give this a whirl. And I'm going to show you what you want it to look like. Yeah, I should have done the I should have done the beans before I did anything else, but you know what? It's still gonna work out. But it's gonna be easier if you uh, do the beans first and then add the flour to your gluten. process and you can see it's still wet so we're going to add some more flour to this and that if you don't have pea flour it could be chickpea flour and it's going to come together nicely i'm going to put another quarter cup of pea flour and i'm going to put some of that starch now this is tapioca starch and you really don't need that much. It's basically an, emul an emulsifier. So I am putting about a tablespoon of this. I'm going to continue inside the food processor and see how the texture is. coming together and look at all the beautiful strands so I'm gonna keep processing this because I want to make sure I get as much of those strands possible
do you know when your gluten is done is when it's warm to the touch. You see all these strands when I pull it? It's warm to the touch and it's attached itself to the center of my food processor. There we go. I'm just going to pull this out. See the nice strands that you get? Okay. I have some parchment paper that I used last time and I'm going to reuse it again because this is perfect. I washed it. This way I don't waste. There we go. It feels a little stickier than when you do the um, when you do the one that's powder, but this year costs you pennies to make. So you know what? For me, this is even better than the other one. So I am just going to close it up this way, make a nice bundle, and I still have the same aluminum I used last time. I am going to reuse it so I don't waste. And we're going to make a nice seal. Oh, got some gluten on there. That's okay. And I am going to seal it this way. Oh, sorry for the shakes. I'm a whole mess today. Here we go. So I am going to pull out my, um, my uh, pressure cooker. And I'm going to put this in for at least two hours to pressure. So you can use an instant pot or you can use like the one I have. I have the star fruit. It's going to work. And if you don't have that, then you can use a steamer. But if you do use a steamer, you do need to, um, you do need to cook a longer than just two hours because you're going to, your steam, most of it is going to be uh, evaporating into your kitchen and you're going to have to, and you got to keep an eye on it because you have to replace that water. So I'm going to cook this up and then I'm going to show you what it looks like. So basically, this meat here, you're probably wondering why I'm making it. Uh, well, I'm making it because I know a lot of people message me and say, Connie, where can I get vital wheat gluten? Is it the same as just using flour? No, you can't just use flour. You basically have to remove the starch from the flour to be left with the gluten itself. And so I'm just showing you uh, how easy it really is that if you don't have vital wheat gluten or you have a hard time getting it, or sometimes you're in a pinch and you have to make something and you didn't have any more in, uh, in the house, you could actually make some kind of meat just by washing your flour and seasoning up whatever gluten that you pull out of the flour. And if you use a good flour, you're able to pull out a lot of gluten. If your flour is like cake flour where you're not going to get a lot of gluten whatsoever in there because they have a lot of tapioca starches and other kind of stuff inside your um, inside the flour but if you're using a good flour or even a bread flour um, I'm using just all-purpose organic flour and it gave me a nice amount of gluten for the five cups that I made uh, and that starch water there's another thing with that starch water if you really want to uh, use up everything that you have I'm just going to put this in my uh, steamer for now if you really want to use everything up, you can even make noodles with that, sorry, with that starch water. Okay, so uh, I'm going to show you just in case. Uh, when you're using your pressure cooker, make sure your valve is closed, uh, that it's not open. And I had it on steam. But because my steam is only 30 minutes, I am able to adjust it. Oh, there you go. I'm able to adjust it with my minutes. So I put it for my first hour. As soon as it rings, I'm going to be able to uh, cancel and redo it again. And that's going to be for two hours. And then I'm going to check my meat. Because sometimes um, it might take a little longer. I've made meat where it took me two hours. I've made meat where it took me two and a half hours. So it also depends what you put in your meat, right? Okay, so basically, um, if you can't find vital wheat gluten, you can make your own seitan, 
just by washing out some flour and it's that simple so I'm gonna cook this uh, I'm gonna cook this up for you guys and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like once I start pulling it apart and you get to see that you can make some beautiful meat just by uh, just by washing some flour and pulling the gluten right out of it so I'll see you in a bit guys okay guys here we go it was in there for two hours I'm just gonna check it I'm going to try not to break my paper because I'd like to be able to reuse it again. Let's give it a good wash and reuse it. I hate throwing these aluminum papers away. And it seems like it's cooked. Let's look. Yeah, I could cook maybe just a little more. But it's going to be nice. Okay, guys, I'm going to put it back in for just a little longer. I'm just going to flip it up. Oops. Yeah, see? It could cook just a little longer. So I am going to tuck it in. So I did two hours, and I'm going to do it for another hour. And then I am going to break her apart. And we're going to try and make some kind of dinner with it. So, the, uh, back into my pressure cooker. There we go. There we go. One more hour. So, this one took a little longer. But that's okay. You got to check your meat. They don't all cook at the same time. It was a pretty big uh, dough ball, so it will take a little longer to cook. But um, yeah, so it cooks a little longer. It doesn't matter. It's not going to damage the meat at all. It's just going to dry it up a little more inside. So I'll see you in one more hour. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay, let's see. Look how beautiful that is. You see that inside, guys? A little hot, so I'm going to wait a bit, and then we're going to open this up. Beautiful pieces, right? Maybe if I could get a little... Yeah, this is best to do when it's cooler. Beautiful strands inside. You see it? Do not burn yourself, guys. Hot, hot, hot. We shall wait. But there you go. That's what it looks like. Nice and light. This is going to be simply delicious. Now, if you want this meat, this is a little more tender. It's not as firm as the one that you make with the vital wheat gluten. But you can firm this up by adding more flours, like the, uh, the pea flour or chickpea flour. You could actually even put some flour back in if you want. But yes, it's very simple to make.
So there you go, guys. Just keep shredding your meat. This is a little hot to handle, but it still works. You could even use a fork if you want to let it guide you. beautiful pieces of chicken meat that I made just by washing out some flour. So there you go, guys. It's really not that hard. And if you want to give it a try, let me know how yours comes out. Make sure, remember that the firmer you want your meat, the more dense your dough has to be. Um, I added some uh, uh, pea flour, but you can, add, you can add some chickpea flour. Like I said, you can even put back some flour in there, but you want your dough to be firm. And if you're okay with these tender pieces like this, this is good too. And it's going to make a very nice stir fry for whoever you're going to make dinner for. So there you go. So I'm going to say thank you. And I'll see you in my next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.